Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Over All Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, I explore a potential SLS Block 2 configuration. Well, at least I think it's a potential Block 2 configuration. NASA probably has not thought of it as a potential Block 2 configuration. You can probably guess what I'm getting at if you've watched my most recent videos. And namely, of course, I've decided to put the Unix first stages or Raptor 9 first stages on the sides of SLS because there's no way in heck I am ever going to launch an SLS Block 2 with advanced SRB boosters. Uh, nor do I think that it's entirely likely that they're actually going to fund F1 engines and do the Perios boosters either. So I think they could probably hand some money to SpaceX and get these things built relatively easily. Uh, SpaceX is going to be mass manufacturing those Raptor engines anyway and the thrust will be sufficient and we are going to try to use this in this configuration so we're still in this case discarding the RS-25s though I do have my little shuttle mice and so we'll test payload capacity with the shuttle mice separately and that'll be for recovering the RS-25s so but first this configuration we are going to launch and we're going to try and send 55 tons to the moon because SLS is not really designed for launching stuff to low Earth orbit. Uh, it's not particularly optimal for that by any stretch of the imagination. So we are going to try and send the payload to the moon. And uh, well, without further ado, let's go for it. Of course, we're going to be reserving fuel in the, in the Raptor stages, in the Unix boosters and we'll, we'll reserve 20 seconds for a return to launch site. Uh, it's possible that we could save less and have them land on a barge or drone ship. So they're not that heavy. I mean, okay, they're heavy, but they're not obscenely heavy. They're uh, fully fueled, they're 900 tons, and uh, they're obviously less without fuel. <laughs> Uh, 900 tons, the regular boosters for SLS are 700 tons, so if they were ever going to put advanced boosters on, those are probably way more. And so I'm expecting that SLS's side mounts can handle a 900 ton booster. And these don't have, ooh, we've got a nose cone separation issue. I was not expecting that. Why? Why is that suddenly happening? Okay, I am concerned. They aren't floating up over here. Let's see, I'm, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna float a theory here, float, and I'm gonna put a little core here. I'm gonna reroute that core. Well, they're on properly now and we don't have any residual um, velocity. So what that tells me is the problem was something to do with the fact that this has a core inside and I think we were actually controlling from the boosters because there wasn't any core on the payload. So that's my theory. Anyway, there really should be a core in the second stage here, but I did not configure the SLS rocket for realism overhaul. So anyway, so ignition. And launch. And we'll just get to a moon-like orbit. I haven't lined up with the moon or anything. So as I was saying, the thrust of these uh, all combined, if we, each engine is uh, 2060 kilonewtons on the ground, so it's about uh, 18 meganewtons for each, boosters, each booster. So that's not too much different from what an advanced booster would have. That's about the same. But these will obviously be much more efficient. Even if they go with the F1 Perios booster option, these are much more efficient. So we've got the fins, we've got the grid fins, we've got all the, that business. One of the nice things about these boosters is that they're sized so that the fins will not interfere with the SLS core. That was important to me. That's one reason why I didn't put six instead of four. It wasn't just based on people saying that now Super Heavy was going to have four. It's because I didn't really didn't want six. Six would interfere and make it hard to use these as boosters. 
Another important feature of these boosters is that I size them to 6.6 .6 meter diameter. And that is because I know for a fact that you can ship the tanks in a Super Guppy. Because 6.6 .6 meters is the same diameter as the S4B stage for Saturn V, which fit in the Super Guppy. Now, you probably can't f fit the entire thing, but you can fit the methane and oxygen tanks separately. So you can fl uh, use them, use the Super Guppy to fly them to the Cape, instead of sending them a slower method. And there's probably a lot of facilities and stuff for 6.6 .6 meter diameter stages. I don't know how much of the old infrastructure they have left, but, I mean, they have bad habit of demolishing things, but... There may be some useful stuff lying around for a 6.6 .6 meter stage. So again, we have a 55 ton payload and we're aiming to get to the moon with it. Not lunar orbit, just uh, translunar injection. Okay, throttling down. Okay, shutting off the engines and separation. Alright, they're off with the 20 seconds of fuel. And throttle up. It's gonna be tight though. Uh, well, actually it's not, because we're probably gonna use the upper stage to finish orbit, so maybe it'll be okay. Um, fairings... I don't know if these fairings are safe to decouple. We'll see. Forget the last time I actually tried these. We'll wait until we're in space. Okay, we are in space. Fairing set. Fairing set. Ooh. Well, yeah, that didn't happen the way I wanted it to. We'll certainly have to work on that. Okay, um, but everything is still fine. Our payload is still there. That's just 55 tons of ab gas. Okay, stage is about to end. We're really close to orbit. And separation and ignition. Nozzle extension. So we might be able to carry a bit more than this. And again, we're still recovering the Raptor 9 boosters. As I'll call them interchangeably with Unix, just because people might not understand what Unix boosters are. I think Raptor 9 gives a uh, more a clearer explanation for what they're they're all about and we're on a, we have a lopsided orbit but i'm probably going to declare this too much delta v we have too much delta v we need to put a heavier load it seems we've got about 600 meters per second extra that we don't need so it can definitely do 55 tons let's try and put 60 tons and see if that'll work Okay, 59.91 tons. Okay, here we go again, now with more stuff. SAS on, throttles up, ignition. And launch. Okay, looking good so far. I did action group the Raptor engines in three sets just in case I would ever want to try to do the landing, so... Okay, so one set, one set, one set, and set. And throttle up. Okie dokie. Okay, we're in space. Let's try those fairings. They're not in the right place right now. Okay. Well, alright. <laughs> alright, that's fine. You can do that. They're good looking fairings though. I mean, textures look nice. Just need to rearrange those nodes. Okay, well, we are definitely ending up with less delta V at this uh, at the end of the first stage than we had before, which makes sense because we're carrying a heavier load. Trajectory was fine. I don't think I'm going to be doing too much better than that. Okay, sep, sep. Oh, 
probably could probably still carry more. It's really, really 60 tons. Okay, well, rather than launching it again like this, I'm just gonna do a rough estimate. So we can lose about, uh, let's say 300 meters per second just to be safe. So we can lose about 300 meters per second. Well, let me just check. We have RCS. Uh, I think I might have forgotten to put the RCS ports on here. We've got the hydrazine, uh, but the actual ports aren't on here. So uh, a little bit more for the RCS ports, we'll say. But uh, anyway, uh, let's go to the BAB and see how much load we can add on and lose 300 meters per second. I think I'll do it that way. Okay. Uh, so just taking off both the fairings. So 13,163 is the lowest we can go. I'll just increase the utilization here. Uh, 163. So this is about it. So 66 tons. So we'll say between 60 and 66 tons is our maximum payload on this configuration. Let's try it with the version that will bring back all of the what we'll call the first stage engines. We still will lose the uh, EUS engines, of course, but at least we can maybe get back the RS-25s. Now there is a catch to this version, and that's that the SSME returners, the shuttle mice, have to basically make orbit or get close to orbit. But we were getting close enough with our previous tests, but if we're carrying a lighter payload, and trying to use more of this tank, it's not going to work. Or uh, these tanks, I should say. It's going to be a little bit awkward because we've got separate... Well, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to underfuel this a, uh, a bit. And we still need a core, I forgot about that. Uh, that was causing problems before. Okay, so... We're going to underfuel these stages because we don't need them doing too much. And we'll try... 55 tons, 55 tons there, and underfuel this more. So th these are going to be at 80% fuel. I'm going to lock them so they don't get refueled for now and unlock them later. So altogether, this is a flat 140 tons, which is nice. Okay, so here we go again. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. So again, now the RS-25s are inside the shuttle mice. The shuttle mice also have the MMH and NTO that is currently locked. And that helps them control themselves on re-entry and also deorbit if necessary. I gave them much more capacity than they strictly needed because they had the volume available. I'll just go ahead and unlock the upper tanks while I can. Okay, engines out and set and throttle up. Why, why is Smart ESS not controlling this anymore? <laughs> uh, what happened there? That's weird. I missed the part where Smart ESS decided that it wasn't in charge anymore. Okay. Uh, fairing set. And there they go. Well, we might have to pitch up a little bit extra because smartest smart ASS disengaged. By the way, the shuttle mice re-enter just fine. The only problem is that they're really heavy considering they're they have a high wing loading, so they have a very high stall speed. So it's really difficult to actually land them. Hopefully, a computerized system would do better than me, but. It is a it is a problem. We might need to find a way to give them some extendable wings or something. I think this should be good enough for them. 
they could probably make the rest of the way to orbit if they need to wait around, loiter in orbit until returning. Yeah, I mean, that that would be a trivial amount for them to do. Okay, separation and ignition. <laughs> Always dramatic. This this always seems to pop up, but somehow, just recently, this keeps popping up and Smart ASS keeps disengaging and the resetting. I don't know how this has started to happen, but it started to happen. I don't know why. Maybe I needed to control from the Delta Core that I put on top and I didn't do that properly or something. Oh, this ended up a little bit lopsided because of that delay. Okay, but we have 3,200 meters per second and we are in orbit. Uh, but I forgot to put the RCS thrusters, didn't I? Okay, well, but 3,200 meters per second would be enough to head on to the moon. And let's just sort of plot something. Well, a mid-course adjustment might be necessary, but if we're going for a polar orbit, that's certainly going to be fine. Uh, 3,150 and we've got 3,200, so... I think it'll be enough, so I will say that this is qualified to send 55 tons to the moon. That's what we're carrying in Avgas. Okay, so that is the testing of this SLS Block 2. Tell me if you approve of this Block 2 configuration. Uh, there's, so there's a Block 2 and a Block 2R if we're using the shuttle mice. Uh, so if we want, if we really need to put SLS to this kind of use, uh, if block 1b just won't suffice, maybe we'll slap some raptor boosters on. Uh, previously I had made the flyback raptor boosters, and those had six raptors in each, but I decided that that was too cumbersome and probably people would buy into the, you know, standard Falcon 9 style raptor 9 boosters instead of a flyback booster. So anyway, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.